As a society, we love to argue about who the best at virtually anything is, right? Who's the best football player? Who's the best basketball player? Who's the best actor? Who's the best film director? And everything in between. This comparative nature is deeply ingrained in the human experience. And it extends into the literary world as well, with people constantly arguing online, in person, and everywhere in between who the best writer of all time is. You have people that love Shakespeare, that love Hemingway, Kerouac, Borges, and everybody else. Once you reach a certain level, the only thing differentiating writers is personal taste and their individual styles. I personally love stream of conscious novels, so I lean more in the camp of Jack Kerouac, whereas you might really love the old English romantics and love Oscar Wilde and the story of Dorian Gray. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Nicholas Corsell, and you're watching The Literary Nomad. Today we're going to be talking about a writer that you've probably never heard of, but a writer that once you read, will likely change your life. Liu Yichang is easily Hong Kong's most influential writer and arguably their most influential creative full stop. I know some may argue that Wong Kar Wai is their most influential filmmaker and artist, but I'd really encourage you to dive deeper into some of Wong Kar Wai's work and see what the root inspiration of them was. For example, In the Mood for Love was based off of a short story called Intersection and 2046 was based off of a novel. Both of these works were written by Liu Yichang and in 2046 Wong Kar Wai actually um, pays homage to Liu Yichang at the end of the movie. To most Western viewers, this end credit sequence means nothing, but if we would have taken the time and effort to investigate it thoroughly, we would have discovered one of the greatest writers that the world has ever seen. No writer marries the West and the East better than Liu Yichang, and this natural coupling between these two ideas began early in his life back in Shanghai. In 1941, Yichang graduated from St. John's University, Shanghai, one of the only American satellite universities in mainland China, then and now. This truly marked the beginning of his Western and Eastern fusion that we see permeate throughout all of his work that's been translated into English. However, it was around this time that his life really became incredibly turbulent with the Chinese Civil War and hyperinflation just completely ravishing the country. And eventually he left for Hong Kong, but he didn't stick in Hong Kong at first. In the years that followed his arrival in British Hong Kong, Yichang lived in Kuala Lumpur and Singapore writing for various newspapers and just kind of doing basic journalistic things in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s. However, eventually he came back to Hong Kong Island and really embraced his career as a writer. However, his story really wasn't that of immediate success. He struggled incredibly to find large readerships for what he called serious literature in Hong Kong and he believed that most people just wanted kind of lighthearted kung fu stories or just things that he didn't view as like literary fiction. He didn't think the Chinese audience was ready for a writer to really push the boundaries of what fiction could be at the time. However, the release of The Drunkard proved all of this wrong. It was Hong Kong and China in general's first ever stream of conscious novel, and in my opinion, it's the best book of all time. It's a book that I've read three or four times since buying it two years ago, and I couldn't recommend it more. The plot itself is very simple and perhaps even overdone. It follows a struggling writer who is, you know, struggling to write and is drinking himself into oblivion while doing it. But the mastery of Ye Chong's work, especially in The Drunkard, comes from how he does this plot that we've seen a million times before. In this fragmented, kind of mystical, stream of conscious narrative, we see everything from a love affair with a prostitute to musings on Chinese art, Chinese literature, both new and old, kickstarting a literary magazine doomed to die from its inception, and more pointless, mind-numbingly boring kung fu stories than anybody could ever handle. We see moments of intense intellectualism in a way that I've never encountered by any writer other than David Foster Wallace, but then like two paragraphs later we'll get just that classic Kerouacian just pure power of a stream of conscious novel where he pushes you through the narrative, he pushes you into his mind, and you feel this world of 1950s and 60s Hong Kong through the eyes of this, this writer who is just drinking himself to death. He's struggling. Everybody around him is saying, oh, you're such a great writer. Why don't you write films? Why don't you write kung fu stories? And you can tell he doesn't want to be a sellout. He wants to be a serious writer, whatever that means. And in this case, it's just he wants to write literary fiction that advances Chinese letters to where he believes that it rightfully should be. But nobody around him is willing to accept that. Nobody around him wants that. They just want him to, to sell out. But internally, he can't come to grips with this. He can't do it. He can't convince himself that that's the life that he wants to live. Thus, nearly every scene ends with him pouring himself one and then ten more drinks. Now, I could sit here all day and tell you about how great Ye Chang's work. I could read you excerpts and tell you about his life, but words cannot do justice to how great and masterful and unfortunately unknown the work of Liu Ye Chang is. 
And so really to end this video, I would just encourage you all to go online and find a PDF of Intersection, his short story. Now I do believe that The Drunkard is better than Intersection, but The Drunkard is incredibly expensive and very difficult to get in English. I had to order a copy from Hong Kong University Press um, and it took like two and a half months to send and it costs like almost 40 US dollars. I think Columbia has one now that you can get, but it's also like $30. So if you're just wanting to dip your feet into this incredible author, I would strongly suggest just Googling um, Intersection, PDF, Liu Yuchang. There's one, I think, I think Hong Kong University or one of the major schools over in Asia published a free English version of it and I couldn't recommend it more. And as far as I know, those are the only two pieces of his works that are in English currently. And honestly, that's the biggest shame that comes with reading and being a massive fan of Liu Yuchang is that there's just not a lot of material to dig into. You go on his Wikipedia page and you see that he's written like 30 novels, but you can't get them. They're so inaccessible. And if you can't read and especially write in Chinese, you, you don't even know how to search them. It's incredibly difficult and something that I really, really, really pray that the future generation of bilingual Mandarin English scholars will work towards fixing in the coming years. Regardless, in just this one novel and one short story, he's able to convey such a level of craft genius that it's honestly inspired me to want to go get a master's studying him and I honestly think that someday I will do that and I just never thought that an author would be able to have such a intense grip over me uh, with so few words, right? Like I've read like 10 Kerouac books, I've read all of Hemingway's and they all have moved me and shaped me and changed me as a writer but none has grabbed me so quickly and so intensely as Leo Ya Chang and for that reason I think no matter who you are, no matter what other writers you like, you have to just drop what you're reading right now and go pick up that short story, Intersection by Liu Yicheng, and let me know in the comment section below what you think of it.